my true african horror story welcome back mystery lovers today we are talking about a man that we will call dan now every story that is told on this channel are real life stories these are stories of people in africa so mr dan is someone who was born into a big family he had lots of brothers and sisters he was the last child of the family mr dan was able to fool everyone in his community and beyond let me quickly tell you this the world is deeper than you see it and not everything you see is as it so be wise mr dan from a young age was very active i will not say the name of the church because the person i'm telling the story is still alive he has family members also so you know how we do it on this channel so mr dan was very active in church he was the first to get to church he was the first to go do the cleaning ringing of the church bell helping everybody around anything that has to do with church he was in charge now if you listen to the video that i have on the channel where i talked about the christmas horror story then you will understand more i will link that so i will say if you're watching this one go and watch the christmas a horror story before this one so you can understand because i talked about mr dan in that story also mr dan walked so much he was loved by everyone he was used as an example to other people's children why don't you be like mr dan he goes to the farm he helps his parents he runs errands for all the people in the community he's always in church he's in charge of the uh, group a children's group he's in charge of helping the priest and all of that he is such a good young man not knowing that all these years mr dan was a wizard and not just a wizard but one that has gone in deep fast forward many years later something happened that even him while he made his confession he said he could not even understand how this happened over the years people of their community they've tried to bring different priests pastors you know strong believers and people to come and pray for the community because they knew there were lots of dark forces hovering around that community they were into all kinds of voodoo there is nothing they don't do in that community but every time they bring these people one thing or the other will happen to these pastors or these priests priests that are being brought so people stay the way they will even bring strong traditional men to come and do you know voodoo against voodoo none work none worked in that community so mr dan they became bolder carrying out their whatever they want to do and they will go as far as attacking because they know when these people are coming so they will even go before them to attack so on this day with all his boldness he went to attack someone that he did not know that what the person had was stronger than what he had that was how this confession came out he started by saying he is a wizard and that he has killed him and his group they have killed and done a lot of havoc in the community and beyond he also explained how they hold their meetings on these huge trees if you are african then you know that in africa we have different types of giant trees we have one of that we call the bush mango we have the baba tree and so many of them 
He said all these massive trees, they love to hold their meetings in places like that. And he said, when you become a witch or a wizard, you have to choose an animal or something that you always change your form into. So some people change to cats, some people change to dog, some people change to bats, some people change to ant, wall gecko, name it, anything that is living. They can transform from human form to that form depending on what mission they are going for. He also mentioned how sometimes they have to go very far to go complete a mission. So then their mode of transportation, he mentioned the shell or the back of a granite, you no, know, the breakable granite. I know some people call it peanuts, the breakable peanuts. He said they can travel on that. They can travel on just the, something like the broomstick. They can travel on. He mentioned so many weird things that you as a human you cannot even fathom what he's saying. He also went further to say that they love carrying their rituals when they want to do all this, they are invoking and all of that. They love doing it in crossroads. And in his community, they have so many crossroads. They have so many areas where the road meets and it's a crossroad. He said in each of all those areas in their community, they have done one or two things. If it's to destroy the lives of the youths, anything you can think of, if it's to make people barren, whatever evil thing that you can think of that they have done it. He said he became so successful and people trusted him because his day life and his night life were totally different. So people really trusted him and he did use that against them over the years. And he said the more he was sent out for these missions to go destroy people's life and all of that. He said there are so many places that he has never visited physically. But spiritually they are able to travel from that community far away. Thousands and thousands of miles just to go for either a meeting or to go complete an evil mission. So over the, over the years, they trusted him and his rank kept on going up. They kept on giving him more rank and he became more powerful and powerful. And he was one of the persons that will always go out on a mission because they know that if he is sent, that mission will be successful. He said he got to the point where physically... He will go into other churches as they have in Africa, some of the African countries, as I know. They have this tradition of when different churches are doing like harvest, they have like when they bring the harvest to church and the priest or the pastor prays over it and they celebrate, they eat, they drink, they do all of that. So different churches, they pick different Sundays to do this celebration and they invite each other. So let's say, for example, Today is a Sunday. If it's the church number one, next Sunday will be number two. Next Sunday, the next church. So he is always in charge in his church, making sure they collect all the goods and all of that. And he said they will invoke things on all these things and he will go to other churches to also cause fuel. He talked about how he will be in church early so he can get everything ready once it's time for the priest or the pastor to start preaching, passing the word of God to the people. He will put all of them to sleep. So that is why when you go to church, sometimes you see people, they are so tired, they fall asleep. But immediately after the church service ends, they come out, they are so active, they are full of life, they are bouncing telling you, I don't even understand why I was tired in church. I, I, I didn't even hear what the pastor or the priest had to say. He said that was their job, that they always position themselves in all corners of the building so they can put the people to sleep so they don't hear the word of God. He went for that to say that in the community, whenever they realize that they are bringing a man of God that is very strong, that will actually reveal some of their secrets, 
they will go before the community and do everything to attack the man if they cannot attack him directly they will attack either his family someone close or something sometimes they will stop the car as he's coming to the community they will cause an accident they will cause something that will delay him or something that will make him or her cancel their uh, trip to the community but the day he stepped into the wrong church that, that was, was the day, day he was arrested, arrested by something by stronger than the power that he had. Subscribe.